Okay, so in your notebooks today, we are looking at section 12.5. This is called a simulation. All right, we're going to be looking at two things today, simulations, and then ultimately we're going to be looking at probability as well. I would assume you have a, a decent grasp on the idea of what probability is. What's that? Oh, I disagree. I think you do. The probability of something taking place could be a coin, sure. The chance of something, absolutely. And now that could come in the form of dice. It could come in the form of a, you know, a spinner. It could come in the form of a coin. All right. Now there's two types of probability. Do you know the different types of probability? Uh, there's experimental probability. You ever heard of that before? Okay. And then the other one is theoretical probability. Any idea what either of those are? Experimental and theoretical. Okay, so good. So experimental probability, I got to do it first. I got to do it. I got to look and see what happens. And then from there, I make my prediction based off of that information. Theoretical probability is what should happen in an equally likely opportunity, all right? So if you take a look at these two dice, the green one and the blue one, they, other than being different colors, they are essentially the same. Would you agree with that? Okay. I would tell you, though, that the green one has theoretical probability. What are the chances I roll this and get a one? One out of, one out of six, right? There's only one one on here. What are the, what's the theoretical probability I roll this and get an even number? Three out of six, one half, 50%, right? What about a prime number? How many of these six numbers are prime? Oh, what's a prime number? We're going to have to start there. It's not, no. One's a prime number. Okay, those are odds right now. And two. Okay, so you could get a one, you get a two, get a three, get a five. Those are all prime numbers, right? So we could say four out of six, we could say two out of three, okay? I would tell you, though, that this blue die does not have theoretical probability. The what should happen situation is not the same as it is for the green one. Yeah, why? It, it does not have a different number on it. So why is it different? <laughs> and obviously, there are different colors, right? One's green, one's blue. There's a problem with the blue die. You don't see it right now because, one, it's not in your hands. But if I were to throw you this die, you would immediately be able to tell me what's wrong with it. What you catch? What's wrong with it? <laughs> and I quote, it's been bitten out of. <laughs> so, somebody ripped the corner of this one off. Now, as I talked to you the entire time, I held my thumb over top of it so you couldn't see it, but it's missing an entire corner. That is going to affect the results of rolling this die. All right. The what should happen approach to the blue die is not, is not there. I'm going to have to roll the blue one and see what happens before I can make statements about what's going to take place. So I'm going to need experimental probability on the blue one, where the green one, because it has not been affected, even though all the corners have been rounded off, they're all rounded off. So it's all fair as far as the green one is concerned. Does that make sense? So when it's all fair, a coin, a die, they have theoretical probability. When it's not, if I took this note card and I folded it like a book, okay, that was a terrible job. And I threw this note card in the air. How many different ways could the note card land on the ground? Well, it could land on its side. Now, I'm not sure we're going to know which side is the side. So we'll say, one, it could land on its side. What's the second option? 
could land like, I don't know, I'll call it a book if it was sitting upright like a book. So that's two. And the third option would be like a tent if it landed like that. Does the folded card, I'm sorry, go ahead. You thinking like this? <laughs> if, it, if there was a way for that to balance on that V like that, that would be super impressive. I would walk out. Okay. <laughs> so there's three options. Does that mean that every one of them has an equally likely chance of happening? No. Now, I don't need to throw this to know which one probably is going to happen. What, what's, what's probably the, the number one option? Landing on its side. What do you think is the second most likely option? Landing like a tent or landing like a book? Okay. All right. So at that point, though, the fact that we're going to like, well, I don't really know which one it would be. That's where that experimental piece has got to come into play. Right? And so maybe I take this thing and I, you know, and I start to toss it. How many times do I do it? Three times. I, okay. As many as I want. But let's be real. The more times I do it, the more accurate my results, yeah, would be, right? If I had to put all my money on one option, it probably is going to be which of the three options on its side, right? If I said, like, listen, I'm betting my grade for the year. If I'm right, I get an A. If I'm wrong, I get an F, okay? Yeah, some of you guys are like, sign me up, right? And then it lands like a tent, and then you cry, okay? But, you know, you would want to do this multiple times before you were ready to make an opinion on, on what it would be, right? So, I mean, if we threw it and we let it go, we would believe that in most situations, it probably would land on its side, right? I mean, the most surface area would be for it to land on its side. Okay, still waiting for that elusive V to fall, and then that would happen, right? But when we talk differences between probabilities, we're getting into the idea about whether things have theoretical probability, okay? What should happen, because they're all the same, or experimental probability, because they're not, and so I got to do it. Does that make sense? All right, so based off of that, can you answer this question for me here? Okay, so a die's been rolled 50 times. There are the results. Find the experimental probability of a prime. And we just talked a second ago about prime. So how many of those are prime? How many? What four? One, two, three, and five. Okay. So what's the probability that I roll a prime? Well, in theory, it's four out of six. But I have this information in front of me. And the word frequency means what? What does the word frequency mean? Oh, my. That's not good. How often something happens. So it happened six times, happened 10 times, happened 14 times, and happened six times. That's a grand total of 36 out of 36 out of what? Oh, my goodness. It's in the question. Out of 50. Okay. Now, 36 out of 50, what percent is that? That is 72%. Okay, so I got a 72% chance that that happens. What's the theoretical probability? We already said that. It was what? Four out of six, or we could reduce that to two out of three. Give it to me as a percentage there. What's the theoretical probability? Uh, round correctly. Nearest hole. Okay, so the theoretical probability is a 67%. This is what should happen. And right now, this is what we're seeing happen, okay? The more times you complete an experimental probability, the closer it will get to its theoretical. Meaning, if I do this 100 times, I'm going to see this 72% most likely come down a little bit. As I do it 500 times, as I do it 1,000 times, we're going to see this thing start getting closer and closer to what should happen because all of these choices in a theoretical situation are equally likely to take place. All right. Now, one more, and then we're going to shift gears into the idea of a simulation because that's really what we're going to do today. Which one of those is right? You really enjoy staring out the window.
the experimental probability of it landing on an odd number. Is it A, B, C, or D? Okay, you got an idea? Oh, I thought you were, you just stretching? Do you think it's B? Okay. You agree or disagree? You agree? Yeah. Odd numbers, right? So one, three, five, and seven, but I'm actually adding these numbers together. Right, those are the frequency of the number of times it occurred. And so, yeah, it'd be 23 out of 50. So the question now is, does this spinner that was used to create this, does it have theoretical probability? It, Yes, it does. What you looking at? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, the outcomes, right, those are the numbers that are possible. So in this case, the spinner obviously had eight eight numbers on it. Right. These frequencies over here, though, these are how many times a one showed up, how many times a three showed up. And since they asked me about an odd number, I was only concerned about one, three, five and seven. And I added the six, the six, the four and the seven for a grand total of twenty three. OK. So Kalen says, yeah, that spinner would have. Theoretical probability. Do you agree with her? What's that? Oh, you are wrong. But do you know why? True. But does it have theoretical probability? That's the question. <laughs> have you seen the spinner? Do you know what the sections look like? In order to be theoretical, what must be true about the spinner? What? What were you going to say? Good. So you guys are saying the exact same statement. They got to be the same. Could they? Absolutely. Do we know that? We have no idea what it looks like. So if I can't, if I can't tell you what the spinner, I can't see it. And I can't make a claim about whether or not it has theoretical probability. Does that make sense? So if I took a, since I can't draw, right, if I take that as my circle and, and I split my spinner to look like this, dang, did I just do a nice job right there. <laughs> Does it have theoretical? Hey, watch yourself. What'd you say? I did what? Yeah, you're curving. <laughs> Does that have theoretical probability to the best of my ability? Yeah, right? I mean, it's, to the best of my ability, I tried to make those all the same, right? But if I took the same circle and I said, well, there's cut number one and then two and then three and then four, five, six. So if I said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, got theoretical probability now? Well, are they all the same? Do they all have the same chance of happening? No. Do I know which one's going to happen the most here? I got a sure good feeling it's going to be an eight. But because they're not all the same, then theoretical's out the window. Okay? That's why the die is fine. Well, as long as it's not the blue one. Right? When they're all equally likely, the coin, we can't peel off one of the, the faces of the coin unless you're the one that's got the, you know, the double the double-sided coin at home. You one of those people? You got, you would have one of those, right? But in that situation, right now, we've impacted the results. And in fact, that still has theoretical probability. The answer is 100%. <laughs> okay, it's 100 and zero. Those are your two choices, all right? Now, the real thing we're gonna try to get into today, and that's why you have your computer in front of you, is the idea of what's called a simulation, all right? By definition, a simulation says you're gonna use some kind of object. We're gonna use the calculator in the, uh, the link that I sent you to act out something that would be difficult or impossible and practical to perform. Something that would be difficult to do, all right? So that, that's, what we're, that, that's our goal. So we're gonna use this example here first. It says, Mandy's a pitcher on the on the high school softball team. All right. 
Last season, 70% of all the pitches she threw were strikes. That's pretty good, right? Okay. 70% of all the pitches. We're going to design a simulation that can be used to estimate the probability that the next pitch that she throws is a strike. Okay. So when you think about this, there's two possibilities, right? She throws a strike, she throws a ball. Okay. Even if you foul tip it or it goes in the dirt or you hit the, it's still either a ball or a strike. Okay. Throw the ball over the head. They drop down, but the bat stays up in the air and hits the bat. Still a strike, right? Still a strike. Okay. So there's two choices. It's a ball or it's a strike. We are going to design a simulation to figure out what happens on her next scenario. Now we know, according to this statement, that 70% of everything she did last year was a strike. So we would believe that her next pitch has a better chance of being a strike than has of being a ball. Would you agree with that? That's fair. That's a fair. No, it depends on what. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Did she take the whole summer off eating bonbons, or was she in the, you know, was she in the in the in the cage getting some work done? I don't know. That's right. We don't know that. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna use what is called a random number generator. Have you ever used one before? Okay, it literally does what it says. <laughs> it's going to generate random numbers, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to let the computer generate numbers for us, but we're going to assign each of those numbers a response, meaning like the number one is going to mean something. It's either going to stand for a ball or it's going to stand for a strike. We're going to just do the same with two, with three, with four, with five. We got to make a decision on how high we want to go, okay? All of her pitches last year, 70% were strikes, 30% were balls. If you turn those into fractions, what would they look like? 70 out of 100, and the other one is? Okay, so we got 70 out of 100, and we got 30 out of 100. That means, if we want to, we can use 100 numbers as our simulation. And the first 70 could represent a strike, and the last 30 could represent a ball, or... The first 30 could be a ball and the last 70 could be a strike. Or if you really want to be smart, we're going to reduce those numbers down so that we don't have to use 100. So how about we change them from 70 out of 100 and 30 out of 100 down to 7. <laughs> there you go. All right. So if we change this one to say 7 out of 10 and this one to say 3 out of 10, okay, we get the same result with way less numbers, all right? Okay, so we are gonna use, just like you guys said, the numbers one through 10 to represent this. And in this situation, I think I'll use the first seven to be a strike and the last three, eight, nine, and 10 to be a ball. Meaning, in a second here, when I say generate these numbers, if it comes out to be a one through seven, we're gonna consider that to be a strike. And if it comes out an eight, nine, or 10, a ball. Okay, does that seem fair enough? All right, now, every time we do it, that's gonna simulate, or we're gonna stand for a pitch, all right? And we're gonna do this 50 times. The more times we do it, the better off we are, all right? Okay, well, so we're gonna look at it right now. So have you, um, have you gone to this link that I gave you? Yeah. Okay, so there's two different generators in here. The top generator, will literally just generate one number at a time. So like right now it says the lower limit, so give me a number between one and 100, and if you click generate, it would say, oh good, 21, <laughs> all right? But I don't wanna do that. I want multiple numbers to come at a time. So I'm not going to use the top one, I'm gonna use the bottom one that says comprehensive, and we're gonna set up a couple parameters here. We decided that the numbers we were gonna use were gonna be what? One through, 10. So in there, I'm going to change the lower limit to say one. I'm going to change the upper limit to say 10. Okay. So one through 10 and generate how many numbers? 50. Okay. And we're going to change a couple more things here. So after you change it to say 50 numbers, you're going to get a couple more options. Did you see a couple more things pop up on your screen? Okay. Should I allow duplicate numbers to show up? Yeah. Well, first of all, listen, I'm only going to use the numbers one through 10. If I called on 50 of them, 
and I only had 10 numbers, I'm going to need duplicates in there or I'm not going to get the 50. All right. So we need a yes there. The next one we could let go, but we're, we're going to change it because we're smart. Basically, do we want to sort our results? Meaning, if we put them in order, it would be a lot easier to know whether it was a ball or a strike than if we let them just come all over the place. So I'm going to choose to put them in ascending order, which means the smallest number will be first and the biggest numbers will be last. And then that way they're just not all randomly all over the place. All right. Work smarter, not harder. And lastly, integers only. Don't give me decimals. Why? Well, I don't want a decimal. All right. We had already decided the numbers we were going to use. None of them were decimals. Now, when you click the generate button, you're going to get a new screen and it's going to give you 50 randomly generated numbers. And your numbers most likely are going to be different than mine. And that's perfectly okay. All right. Now, we got to count here. Because there's only two things, I don't think we need to count them both. So is it smarter for us to count the strikes, which were any things that were one all the way through seven, or is it better for us to count the balls, which were just eight, nine, and 10? Okay, so for me, since I put them in least to greatest order, all the eights, nines, and tens are gonna be down here at the bottom of my list. Man, she must have been hanging out eating bonbons. Look at all those. So eights, nines, and tens. For me, and I don't know what yours says, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 out of what? Okay. So if I come back over here, eights, nines, and tens showed up 19 out of 50 times for a grand total percentage wise of what? What is 19 out of 50? as a percent, 38%. Now, if 19 out of 50 were balls, then what were strikes? 31, so 31 out of 50, which as a percent is 62%. So according to my simulation, the question was, what are the chances that the next pitch she throws is going to be a strike? My answer is, Six, you got 62% chance, okay? Take it in terms of shooting a basketball. There's two options. You make it or you miss it. But if it's me and Steph Curry down there shooting together, those aren't the same, <laughs> okay? I'm going to light him up, all right? <laughs> I almost said that without laughing, right? Like that dude is unconscious, right? It ain't 50-50 it ain't for him. It's like 95 to 5 for that dude, right? He is unbelievable, right? So when we look at this, we started with the representation of what she had done prior. But using that, we created a model and ran the probability of what would happen in that situation. Okay? So now we're going to try it with this one. I'm going to let you guys kind of take a little bit more of the lead, all right? Graduation is like next week, right? Right now it says there's a 35% chance of rain on graduation day. And as of right now, the ceremony's outside because COVID rules, okay? Not really. It's at the Civic Center if you're going. <laughs> all right. But outdoor graduation, all good as long as what? As long as it doesn't rain, right? If it rains, you got to have a backup plan. Can't just decide to put everybody out there in their pretty dresses in the, in the rain, right? Grandma ain't going to like that, okay? So 35% chance of rain, which means 65% chance no rain. Can I use the numbers 1 through 10, like I did a minute ago, to represent this scenario? No. Why not? <laughs> Why not? You're all right. There are two options, but can I? Last time I said I had 70% and 30%. So it was easy. 1 through 7, that was 7 numbers. 8, 9, and 10, that was 3 numbers. That's 70%, 30%. No big deal. Can I do that here? Why not? No. My, my problem isn't the percentages. Well, it kind of is the percentages. Think about this. Jack, what do you think? What? 35 is not a whole number. Um, okay. Well, I'll take that statement. 
that's rain, right? 35 out of 100. That means 65 out of 100 is no rain. And it's not that I can't reduce it, but that I can't reduce it down to something out of 10. What can I reduce it down to? I can reduce it down to something out of 20, which means I'm not gonna generate numbers one to 10, I'm gonna be generating numbers one to 20, okay? So what can I reduce this to? Seven out of 20, good. Take a five out of both of those, you get seven out of 20. Over here, 13 out of 20, right? Okay, so I'm close to being ready to run my simulation. There's one more thing I have to do before I generate the numbers. Okay, good. You don't get to run the simulation, look at it and go, okay, so now these numbers are the ones that mean rain. You gotta do that now. So do you want the first seven numbers to be rain, one through seven, or do you want the first 13 numbers to be no rain? And then the other seven, you just gotta make a choice. Doesn't really matter. Some of you guys, though, get paralyzed by this. You, you literally cannot make a choice. It doesn't matter. That, that literally doesn't matter. We can do whatever we want. We just got to put numbers to our scenarios. So what are we choosing? What are we choosing? Perfect. So if rain is one through seven, then no rain is what? Eight to 20. Okay. We have to generate a list of 20. So if I come back over here, you should be able to just scroll to the bottom of your uh, list of numbers. Am I ready to just generate another 50? What am I gonna change? Change, um, let's just change, which one? Let's just change the upper, change it to what? Mega 20, we can leave the bottom one at a one, right? So we'll make the upper limit now be a 20. Everything else is good. Are we gonna allow duplicates? Yes. Put them in order, only on only whole numbers, decimals. Um, the more you choose, the, the more you generate, the better. So I would say never less than 50. All right. And at this point right now, I gotta count. So am I counting the rain, which was the one through the seven? Or am I counting the no rain, which was the 8 through the 20? I mean, I probably would count the rain. I hope there's going to be less of those. I mean, the goal would be to count the one that has the least, right? If you only have two choices, there's no reason to do them both. So count it. What do you get? On my list? Okay. And I... And I, and I also, I think I'll say 19 on mine. What's that? Sure. And that's, that, that's the piece there. Okay. Each one of yours can be different. Why? There's a random generator. Okay. So for me, and it sounds like for a couple of you, uh, we got 19 out of the 50 here. That is supposed to say 19. Okay. That didn't look very good. All right. And on the other side, if I got 19 on the left side, I must have... 31 on the right, so 31 out of 50. So the question is, uh, estimate the probability that graduation will have to be moved inside. Which one of these columns is forcing me to move inside? The, yeah, this one, the, the rain column over here, right? So 19 out of 50 is, what percentage is that? 38. So a 38% chance that I would have to move graduation inside. Okay, running my simulation. Now, if you're thinking crafty right now, I just told you that every one of us could end up with a different number down here at the bottom. Is that fair? So when I'm looking at this to see if you understand what it is that we're talking about, I'm grading you basically on the first part leading up to this. Have you correctly identified the percentages that are going to be in your problem? Have you correctly identified the number of values that are going to be in your simulation? And like in this case, the number was 20. Have you correctly identified what your columns are standing for? Rain versus no rain. Okay. Have you decided what numbers in your simulation are going to stand for each? I have no clue 
about the very last part. Do I? If you made it up, would I know? I mean, not unless it was like, oh, you know, 48 out of 50. I oh, doubt it. Okay. But I really wouldn't have any idea on that portion. So the setup is the part that I'm concerned with. And then lastly, obviously, in this case, the question itself was estimate the probability of having to move graduation inside. And in this case, we would say we have a 38% chance of having to move it inside. Okay. Now, if you're the boss man, boss woman, that might be enough for you to say we're moving inside. Okay. But I golfed in a golf outing this weekend and the little weather app said 0% all day and I got rained on like 10 times. Okay. Yeah, no chance, okay, of the zero that they claimed. Okay, I got rained on all morning long. So you just you just never know. I was kind of not happy. What are we going to do? Yeah, so anyways. All right, so you have four questions on here. One of them is theoretical and experimental. That one will be really quick. The other three are simulations. So I kind of want to see how you set those up, okay? You are going to need to use the generator. Uh, that we just had that's that's given to you there in classroom. All right.